Uh, question was from the organization of Black Unity, and we are also trying to do black education. We plan out a black school in the city. Number one problem that we have is that people will come and talk, and they will come and listen, and they will come and say, yeah, that sounds like a good idea. Yeah, I'm putting money into that. And you will find nobody willing to do the work. So we're finding that you have lots of people who want to talk a lot, but not many people want to do a lot. So I'm sure you've come across this. What is your number one word of advice for dealing with that issue? Okay. Two things. Number one, and I have come across it, <coughs> apathy is generally a big issue in the black struggle, conscious world. However, even though a lot of our people are not necessarily inclined to look after the best interests, I often find that as black organizations, we don't do a good enough job recruiting. We can be very lazy in our recruiting tactics. So what I mean by that, we will send out an email blast and expect people to respond to it. We will send a, a Twitter invite or a Facebook invite and think that's how we get I find the best way to recruit folks now is the same way our ancestors did 50 years ago. And that is face to face, door to door. I want to be very clear, we cannot lead a revolution on social network. I know we want to because we're lazy. It's easy to do a Facebook revolution, but it's not going to be successful. Black folk have to see you, they have to feel you. Like take me for example, right? I always say that once I get the people out, I got them. But I got to get them out first. And the best way for me to be able to engage anybody is through face to face. I'm going to do much better than I would ever do using social network as the conduit. So we have to make sure we have a street campaign. If an organization is saying they're not giving enough folks to support their effort, I want to see a street campaign. Most of us don't have a street campaign. We have an internet campaign. Where's the street campaign? The other thing too, our marketing strategy. I noticed that black organizations, we don't do a good job marketing ourselves. We feel people should just get down with us because we're doing the right thing. That's not enough. You have to sell yourself to black women. In psychology, uh, business of psychology, people give you basically 10 seconds. In 10 seconds, you got the winner, or they double you for good. It's just like a lecture. I got to grab my audience in 10 seconds, or that's it. So we got to ask ourselves, what are we saying to people in the first 10 seconds of the meeting? What is the pitch? What am I throwing at? But I really think we got to hone our marketing and we got the whole our street campaigns. Average black organization don't have a street campaign. So those would be my two things. Okay? But I do support the organization of Black Unity, the good sister uh, Kush, who's working my table tonight, so I want to give a shout out to Sister Kush back there. My brothers and sisters, please support the organization of Black Unity. Another thing I want to say before I go to question number two. And that is we have a Marcus Garvey display behind here when we're done tonight. You guys want to take a look at it. I believe you may be able to. Okay. But it's a very thorough one, one of the best I've seen in terms of an exhibit of the life and times of His Excellency Marcus Messiah Garvey, whose organization, by the way, the Universal Negro Approved Association of African Communities League, of which I am a member and former Minister of Education and former Vice President of the Philadelphia Division, it turns 100 years old. Marcus Garvey started the UNIA in the summer of 1914. This past summer, it became 100 years old. Okay, so just just wanted to let you know about the incident. Who's my number two? 